Attention! McCarthy Math Academy proudly presents the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. Hello everyone, I'm Miss McCarthy and I am so excited that you are here. are more than a test score. We don't want you stressing out about this test. We just want you to activate your greatness within. And you might be saying, But Miss McCarthy, listen, I know that math is your jam, but math and I, yeah, we're not really the best of friends. You may have struggled in the past, and you know what? Good. Struggle is necessary because struggle makes us stronger. If we go over something in these videos that you're like, hmm, that skill didn't quite click yet, I'm gonna send you to more videos to help you practice. Your teachers and I, we can expose you to all kinds of tools and strategies, but you have to choose to use them. You have to choose to own them. Imagine opening up that test and feeling so excited to throw down your best. This can be your reality. So now is the time that you need to activate the person you were born to be and let's do this. Are you ready to throw 100% focus, hustle, and heart into this right now? That's what I'm talking about, yes! Okay, let's go ahead and jump on into today's episode of the Math FSA Bootcamp Series. And <laughs> I almost forgot to say, uh, let me teach ya. What's going on, fifth grade? Welcome to the Math FSA Boot Camp Series. This is video number 20. All right, so make sure that you have your worksheet. If you don't know what I'm talking about with the worksheet, check out the link below or somewhere around this video that will take you to my website where you can download the worksheet that you need for video number 20, this one, along with the other episodes in this fifth grade Math FSA Boot Camp Series. So go ahead, pause the video. I want you to throw down your best as if these two questions were on the test and then come on back to check your work and get all the extra strategies that I'll be throwing at you. All right. So I'll see you in just a second. All right, fifth grade, welcome back. Let's go ahead and go over this. And you know that I like to start with the question type. I see four answer choices. So what kind of question do we think this might be? A multiple choice, oh yes. One correct answer here. Okay, now let's read it, mark up our text and make sense of the problem. So it says a box in the shape of a rectangular prism has the dimension shown. Okay, so this is the rectangular prism right down here and dimensions are the, are like the, uh, the length, the width, the width, <laughs> I messed up, because this is the height. All right, these are the dimensions of the box, okay. What we need to do is find the volume of the box. Well, you should know that the volume equals the length times the width times the height. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So we have a length of seven feet times a width of five feet times a height, which I messed up before, but this is definitely how high it is, a height of four feet. Okay, and then you just multiply across. So seven times five is 35, and 35 times four. Well, let me bring that to the side over here, make sure we get this right. Four times five is 20. Ooh, what's high up here in the clouds? Nice landing, dude. Four times three would be 12 and 12 plus two is 14. All right, so 140. So we know it's not 16, it's not 16, but we do have two 140s. The only difference is the square feet and the cubic feet, okay? So which one is right? Square feet is when we're referring to the area. Cubic feet, is when we are referring to volume. So the answer that is correct would be choice D, 140 cubic feet or feet cubed, all right? 
Notice how much work went into this problem. I didn't just guess an answer. I put a lot of thinking into it and that's what you should be doing too. All right, let's go ahead and check out number two. First things first, let's identify the question type. I see two grids, that means that it is a gridded response. What kind is it? A gridded response. If you hear pounding, in the background like little droplets of rain that's because it's raining right now but these videos they need to get created for you all to see them to watch them to absorb them in time for the fsa so rain or shine i've got your back okay gridded response we've got two gridded responses Ooh la la and now let's go ahead and read the problem a right rectangular prism we'll draw that shape that is basically a fancy word for a box has a volume Volume is length times width times height of 400 cubic meters and a width W of 8 meters. What are the possible length and height in meters of the prism? So we're going to put our length here and our height there. Okay, I totally need to draw this out. So, and I encourage that you do the same too. Here is how you could draw a box. So first, what we could do is draw a rectangle. Okay, then you just go to these corners. You go to the bottom corner and make a little up, make a little diagonal there about the same size, and one more right there, and then you just connect them. And there you go, you got a box. Okay, now let's plug it in. We know that this whole volume equals 400 cubic meters. And we also know the width. The width. So that would be this part right here is 8 meters. But we don't know the length and we don't know the height. We have to figure that out. So what we do know would be length times width times height equals 400. We also know that the width is 8, so length times 8 times height equals 400. So we know that if we can find the length and the height and multiply that by 8, we should get 400, but we kind of have to think backwards. So because we are multiplying here, we need to do the inverse operation. We need to divide 400 divided by 8 to see what is left right there. So to do that, do it over here, make sure I'm not going in my bubbles. So eight goes into 40 five times, which is 40, right? And I can do a zero here and a zero there. So 50 times subtract, we get zero. So we know that eight times 50 will give us 400 right? So this 50 right here needs to equal the length times the width. So basically anything that you choose, you could choose anything you want for the length and anything that you want from the width as long as when you multiply those two factors you get 50. So when I think of 50 I think of like 5 times 10, right? So I could put 5 and 10 right there. What else could you multiply by to get 50? Maybe 25 times 2, right? <laughs> 50 times 1. It does not have to be complicated here. It's just showing that you know you could have done 10 and 5. You could have done a whole bunch of different things. As long as these two numbers, when you multiply them, they get a product of 50, you are good to go. Also, I like to start my gridded responses from the left side and go over, but your teacher may like you to start from the right. So if they want you putting the 5 there, that's totally cool. Just pick a side Stick with your teacher's choice, because they are your leader after all. I'm just here to help, and there you go. Now, if you know that you need some more help with these kind of problems, let me point you in the right direction. All right, fifth grade. So if you know that you need some more help with volume, I definitely encourage you to check out unit 10 at McCarthy Math 155. You should see a link below and then from there I want you to sign up for your free seven day trial. You'll get access to actually 
all of the third, fourth, and fifth grade videos and worksheets. So do as many of those as you can in those seven days. If for some reason you don't automatically get an email when you sign up, please reach out to me on my email. You'll see it on my website and I will certainly help you out as fast as possible to make sure that you get started with that free trial. Okay. So check out unit 10. You're probably going to love this series, especially if you're a teacher and you've got a classroom full of students. And just so you know, teachers, you can totally share these videos with your students. I walk you through how to do that on the tutorials tab on my website. Check out video number five. The next link that I'd love for you to pay attention to is to the how to pass the math FSA series for this particular standard. Now the how to pass the math FSA series was created several years ago, back when the fifth grade version of the FSA was a computer based test. Now it's a paper based test, which is why I've created the math FSA boot camp series for you. Still the older series, the how to pass the math FSA series provides great practice. It's still standards based, just some of the questions, they look a little bit different. So definitely check that out. I'd love for you to follow me on my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram and Facebook at McCarthy Math Academy. I'm also here on YouTube at McCarthy Math Academy. If you're watching this on YouTube, could you take a quick second to smash that like button? Not for me or to make me feel good, even though it does, but to support my mission. You see, I know as a teacher that there are so many students out there who are struggling with math. And I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click and make it stick for as many third, fourth and fifth graders as possible. So when you smash that like button, you're drawing more students in to watch these videos that I'm creating and therefore I can help them and that's what I want to do so badly. So thank you for transforming somebody's life. That's pretty cool. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe. That way you're the first to know when I drop a new video. And before we go, I just want you to know, I want to remind you that you were created for a purpose. That's right. You are the generation that we have been waiting for. So find your light and shine it bright. Watch out world because do you see this generation of fifth graders? <laughs> yeah, well, they're about to step it up and make this world a better place. When you have the choice, y'all, choose kindness and you always have that choice. And I will see you all on the next episode.